1929 at Geneva, long before Hitler and his partners began to eye the real estate of the world, there was an international conference. Here, nations solemnly promised to uphold the rules covering the treatment of prisoners of war. The articles that were pledged are no secret. They are clearly stated in Field Manual 27-10 and in training film 19-1360, Handling Prisoners of War. Although the Japanese have never officially accepted the Geneva Rules, they have stated their intention to abide by them. We treat the Japanese the same as we do any other prisoners. Regardless of whether a single soldier gives up or a general surrenders for thousands of men, they both know they will be treated in accordance with the Geneva Rules. September 16, 1944, Nazi Major General Eric Elster surrendered his 20,000 men to General Macon of the 83rd Division near Loire, France. Sir, inasmuch as thy command, forced by circumstances of war, has seen fit to withdraw from my command certain combat elements that were capable of continuing to fight, I am no longer in a position to break through to the German frontier by force of arms. And I therefore surrender the infantry units and transport vehicles remaining under my command to the United States Third Army according to the conditions agreed upon. General Elsa, acting for the commanding general of the 9th United States Army, Lieutenant General William H. Simpson, and on behalf of the Army of the United States, I accept your surrender. You, your officers, and men will be given treatment in accordance with the principles of the Geneva Convention. When an individual commander surrendered 20,000 men to a handful of Americans, prisoners flocked to the surrender junction in all types of conveyances horse-drawn hay wagons taken from pillaged French farms, command cars, engineers' trailers, supply vans, fuel trucks, lumber carriers, and even bicycles. It's practically impossible for the military police to be on hand every time a prisoner is taken, so it's necessary for every available soldier to know the rules covering the treatment of prisoners of war while acting as guards. Policing machinery must be established immediately, not only to guard prisoners constantly, but to see to it that their weapons, livestock, vehicles, and other supplies will never be used by them again. Acres and acres of the material for making war are confiscated and sent to rear areas as rapidly as possible to prevent the Nazis and their equipment from becoming roadblocks against the speed of our advancing armies. Prisoners of war, trudging back to internment camps along roads which, a few years before, trembled under their proud goose-stepping. We've taken over 600,000 prisoners in France since D-Day, and more than a million since America's entry into the war. All of these men had to be clothed and fed. There are definite rules, and they're the same for both sides. In the event you are captured, it's a good idea for you to know them. As soon as possible after an enemy soldier has been taken, he is thoroughly searched and all documents and weapons are taken away from him. These are later turned over to G2 for further investigation. Often these apparently innocent belongings will supply the answer to some tactical problem. This is the enemy, disarmed, helpless. He thinks about many things after he's captured, but the big three probably are hate, Fear, escape. 
He may not realize it yet, but he has nothing to fear. However, escape never leaves his thoughts, and our men know it. G2 always allows the prisoner to abide by the rules. But a word dropped off guard, a hesitant phrase, and this prisoner has unwittingly betrayed his country. A prisoner of war and a G2 sergeant chat over a tactical map of the area. We tried to surround your battalion here, says the non-com. Nine, nine, that wasn't our position. We were over here. Each prisoner, before he knows it, has added a fact, no matter how small. When all the pieces are put together, the jigsaw is nearer completion, and we know where and how to strike next. After prisoners are questioned and searched in the immediate vicinity of their capture, they are moved back to a rear echelon. They carry their own wounded. In serious cases, when it is possible, our men will move a badly hurt German to the rear, where hospital facilities will be provided. Prisoners of war are not marched over 12 miles a day, and rest periods are granted on the march. If the march is long, prisoners are fed hot food if available. If there is no hot food, they are given sea rations, the same chow given to the MPs who guard them. That's in the book, and we live by it. Look resigned, don't they? But the big thought with them is still escape. And our MPs have to make certain at all times that their prisoners remain under vigilant guard. When the move to the rear has been completed and the prisoners have been identified and tagged, processing continues. This time, it's even more thorough. The rules agreed upon at Geneva covering the treatment of prisoners of war are read from Field Manual 27-10 in a language they can understand. Upon capture, every prisoner is bound to give only his name and rank or serial number. Prisoners may attend church services on the condition that they comply with military regulations covering their conduct. Prisoners shall be allowed to receive packages intended to supply them with food, reading material, and clothing. Prisoners are entitled to the same quality rations clothing and living quarters, as are afforded our own troops, and sanitary measures will be practiced by and for them. Again, prisoners are searched and sent to the interrogation tables. A great deal of what we know about the enemy is uncovered here by our intelligence teams. Sentimental keepsakes, family letters, cherished photographs, innocent friendly things to a soldier, vital information to the eyes of our intelligence. For example, G2 discovered this letter written by a lonely Frau. I have not been able to work at the plant for two weeks now, and being home with so much time to think about you and the war is bad for me. I would rather be kept busy. Harmless enough, but add the dated postmark and G2 knows why there's a plant inactive in Dortmund. Confirmation that our Air Force flattened it. When these nuggets of information have been sifted, the prisoners are sent to a personnel clerk for further questioning. Was tun Sie beim Militär? What's your job in the Army? Scharfschütze. Expert gunner, shooting. Ihr Beruf, bevor Sie Soldat wurden? What kind of work did you do before you became a soldier? Ich war immer Soldat, Gewehr und Maschinengewehrschütze. I've always been a soldier, firing rifle and machine gun. His days as a gunner are over. But the Geneva rules say that we can put him to work. So we'll find Fritz a new job and pay him for it. Just as you will be put to work and paid if you are captured. As soon as facilities can be provided, prisoners are taken to the docks, loaded on ships, and sent to internment camps. Take a good look at these prisoners. Store that picture in your mind. It could happen to you. A slight turn in the fortunes of war and those trucks might be the enemies, ready to carry you to a camp somewhere inside Germany. If they were, you'd be going through approximately the same routine. And if you know what to expect, you'll know how to handle yourself. After five long years, the supermen are finally on their way across the channel. But they're making the trip as prisoners, not conquerors.
Under the watchful eyes of our MPs, enemy soldiers jump from a landing barge onto English soil. They're counted and recounted. Every move requires another check. German boots rumbling over the streets of an English seacoast town, but not as they had planned. station, the prisoners are ushered aboard a train which is waiting to take them to the prison camp. No Nazi who wants to live would try to make a break now. Chances for collusion and conspiracy among the officers and men are minimized by placing the officers in separate cars. The train ride carries the prisoners deep into the English countryside. What used to be peaceful grazing meadows have been strung off with barbed wire to house the incoming thousands of war prisoners. Enclosures are subdivided so that the larger areas contain the enlisted men and the smaller hold the enemy officers. All of them are guarded every minute of the day and night. Again, the prisoners are searched. Concealing things is a war prisoner's neatest trick. And even after he has been searched three or four times previously, something will usually turn up. They're clever, but we try to be one step ahead of them all the time. Meals are served regularly. It's our food, but they've got to supply their own cooks to prepare it and their own KPs. After their stay here, this batch of prisoners is due for shipment to the United States. Special letter forms are posted on the bulletin board. Okay, Hans, you can write to that kid in Freiburg or that Fräulein in Wilhelmshaven, just as long as we're sure that Joe Smith can write to his mother in Denver or his girl in Galveston. Near a port somewhere in England, they get ready for that last long trip out of the war. Sometimes the trip is pretty rough. The prison ship, U.S. bound, was driven on jagged rocks by a storm at sea. A man on a sinking ship has everything he can do to save himself. But American officers knew that their responsibility was also to save their prisoners. finally broke in two. After nearly all of the prisoners had been evacuated, four American officers went with it to the bottom. Were Nazi lives worth the sacrifice? Not by a long shot. But Germany holds American prisoners in hostage. Germany may hold you. That's why those officers had to give their lives, because it will be your right likewise to be guarded and kept safe under all conditions. Another ship carried these prisoners to the United States. Large convoys are crossing the ocean with boatloads of war prisoners. In the United States, the men are assigned to permanent prison camps scattered all over the country. Here, they are busily engaged in all types of useful work. More than a million well-trained enemy soldiers are taken off the battlefields, and thousands more continue to pour into internment camps every day as defeat slowly and surely closes in around their country. that once were raised in blind fanaticism to a false idol are now the symbols of defeat.
General Ulsa. Acting for the Commanding General of the 9th United States Army, Lieutenant General William H. Simpson, and on behalf of the Army of the United States, I accept your surrender. You, your officers, and men will be given treatment in accordance with the principles of the Geneva Convention. There was an international conference. Here, nations solemnly promised to uphold the rules covering the treatment of prisoners of war. The articles that were pledged are no secret. They are clearly stated in Field Manual 27-10 and in training film 19-1360, Handling Prisoners of War. Although the Japanese have never officially accepted the Geneva Rules, they have stated their intention to abide by them. We treat the Japanese the same as we do any other prisoners. Regardless of whether a single soldier gives up or a general surrenders for thousands of men, they both know my command certain combat elements that were capable of continuing to fight. I am no longer in a position to break through to the German frontier by force of arms. And I therefore surrender the infantry units and transport vehicles remaining under my command to the United States Third Army according to the conditions agreed upon. In 1929 at Geneva, long before Hitler and his partners began to eye the real estate of the world, they will be treated in accordance with the Geneva rules. September 16, 1944, Nazi Major General Erich Elster surrendered his 20,000 men to General Macon of the 83rd Division near Loire, France. Sir, inasmuch as the High Command, forced by circumstances of war, has seen fit to withdraw from